my name. <laughs> Darn it. Can you you can you can log out and come back in and do that? I, okay. I did that the first time. Oh. <laughs> okay, well we're live and at least we'll be right back. <laughs> uh, hi guys, welcome. Uh, I am Stephanie. I'm the publisher and editor in chief of Curl Magazine, and tonight we have our stylist panel who helps us make sure that we have all of the correct information to give you in the magazine with us tonight uh, live. And we're gonna talk about um, some easy minimalist hair care, especially if you're new to embracing your curls. If you are just now, um, if you are just now, you know, if you're used to blowing out your hair all the time and now you can't do that, uh, or you can't see your stylist, or for whatever reason you're ready to embrace your curls, we're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. Uh, unfortunately, Meg is not able to join us. She's dealing with a migraine, but we have Michelle, Gina, and Elise uh, here to chat a little bit. And um, first, I want to say we hope you are all safe and well and that you and your loved ones are staying home and um, just doing the best you can. It's a really difficult time. Um, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate what you're doing for each other. And um, especially those of you on the front lines, working in grocery stores, working in hospitals, um, we thank you for what you're doing and we hope that you stay safe and well. And um, yeah, we're gonna jump in and talk a little bit about quarantine curls. And first, we're just gonna start off and ask our panelists kind of what they've been doing with their hair during this quarantine when nobody else is seeing them. <laughs> Michelle, why don't you start us off? Well, today was the exception. I actually did my hair and had a relatively good hair day. So yay for me. Uh, for the most part, the last month has truly been living in a bun, top knot, whatever. Um, I've, I've really kept it minimalist. I um, have been doing deep conditioning treatments, kind of doing self-care, taking time to allow my hair just to air dry, um, just really keeping it simple, keeping it easy, trying to let my hair breathe for a minute, not using many hair products, things like that. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. <laughs> Elise, how about you? Um, my hair underneath this head wrap is a tragedy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been going through some major uh, morning sickness and I can't fathom the idea of shampooing my hair. So it's just been in this head wrap in the same bun for I don't know how many weeks and I'm not worried about it. My husband saw me push a whole kid out. He's not worried about my hair being crazy. <laughs> and I have the head wrap on just because I, I don't feel like hearing it from y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, part of the part of the cool thing is that, you know, we're just like everybody else. We don't always want to do our hair. I mean, we've got our hair like I just scrunched out my crunch right before Gina's got her cast going. Um, and so, you know, it's real life. It doesn't have to be perfect all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Gina, how about you? <laughs> Yeah, I've actually kept up on my regular schedule um, just because it's easy already. And it's just keeping my hair healthy during this time. So I'm just doing my regular thing. If I don't do my hair, it's um, flat and uh, greasy, honestly. So if I do it, if I put the time into it, and I actually, I have my little hood dryer, one of my hood dryers here. I said one. You're right. You heard that correctly. Hood dryers at home? Yo, hello. Yeah. I got this one, this little portable one. It's like 60 bucks. It's not a big deal. I got like my big old salon one downstairs as a permanent fixture. And then I've got the purple people heater. You know, that thing is going around just, I bought that one actually for my videos to demo what people could have. So that's why I bought these ones. Um, so people could see what their options were. And then I just liked having them so much that like I got a dryer in every room. This is real life for me and it could be real life for you. But yeah, so tonight though, I, um, I mean, this is real life. This really happens. If you're a client of mine, you've seen this happen. I sometimes wear my clips to the salon because I know that I want my hair to last a couple days. And for me, that has everything to do with drying. So uh, you guys are going to get to see me like scrunch out the crunch because this is, this is real. This is really <laughs> happening right now. So I'd like to wear this hair through Monday. Yeah, I actually have that. Um, we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes about um, 
how you can make your hair last for multiple days just because we have time to wash it right now doesn't mean that we want to. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll talk a little bit about how to make your hair last. Um, let's uh, shift a little bit to say somebody who's been getting a blowout every week or they're new to embracing their curls. They haven't been able to see their regular stylist and they've said, you know what, I'm going to try this for a little while. Yeah. What, where do they begin? What, I guess that's, that's the question. <laughs> where do they begin? Um, well, using products that aren't heavy in oils and butters, I mean, I'm sure you guys are going to jump right in there and say the same thing, same thing, oils and butters and silicones, especially if you're on the beginning of your journey, you want to get hydration into your hair. That's what curls need. So if you have frizz, you need water to get inside your hair. And if you've got anything sitting on the surface, over time, things are going to build up. Um, and if you're using products that are going to sit on the surface and block the hydration from getting inside, then it's going to dry out and you're not going to enjoy your curls. So this is a great time to start detoxing that off so that you can get water inside and spend time with your conditioner. That's what I have to say. Yeah. Um, have realistic expectations. Um, if you've been straightening for a really long time, um, no matter what your curl diameter is, because um, I don't really like to say curl pattern. Everybody's curl pattern is different, but whatever your curl diameter is, um, it's not going to be what is actually growing out of your scalp. That heat has stretched it. Um, so you may have a tighter curl at the root, a looser curl at the bottom, straightness, and it's not going to match. And so be patient with yourself. Give yourself some grace. Um, know that one, you're just starting on the journey of curls. Two, you've got a lot of different things going on at each point of your head. How, how long have you been flat ironing? That, that bottom part, that uh, end part, you've been flat ironing way more than you've been flat ironing the roots. Um, and know that it's not going to come out perfect. You've got to learn your way through the hair. Um, and there are plenty of stylists who are doing virtual consultations and um, have courses and communities right now um, that can be guiding you before you go ahead and have that curly um, hair appointment once we open back up outside. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's easy to fall down that curly girl rabbit hole. And I know even myself as a hairdresser, um, before I became a curl specialist, when I myself started embracing my own curls, it was a lot. It was a lot. And I figured if I was a hairstylist and had a hard time finding, you know, real information, how were, you know, everyday people out there who aren't hairdressers having, um, you know, are they having trouble finding information? Because I know that I was. So absolutely, don't don't waste your time looking, um, combing through the internet. I, you know, I, I would I would definitely use the resource guides. Find um, a stylist. Uh, reach out to somebody that has a course. Um, enroll in a virtual consultation. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more, Elise. That's great recommendations. For yeah. sure, we have. Uh a list at readcurl.com slash consultations. If you are interested, um, we've been putting together a list of stylists who, of curl uh, specific stylists who are doing online consultations right now because they can't be in the salon. Uh, if you're a stylist and you're doing these and you wanna be on the list, um, you can find out how to get on it at that same link. Um, so you guys check that out. If you're interested in finding somebody to talk to about your hair during this time while you can't get into the salon. Um, hi, Laurie. <laughs> friends, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of curl friends popping in here. <laughs> Camille, Adriana, my my hair twin. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, no, really, oh my goodness, I just thought about that. And y'all's curls are almost exactly the same. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so let's keep talking about uh, the newbies a little bit. Um, What's the most basic kind of minimalist products for a newbie or somebody who doesn't have the time to try a bunch of different things? And um, what, you know, if you were telling, you know, if you have somebody new come into your chair and they're like, I can't, you know, buy 47 different things, what kinds of products are you telling them are the, the base for what they need? So for at-home use, I'm telling a client usually to get an all-purpose shampoo. 
So we're, we're doing um, all the detoxing and clarifying in the salon. I don't typically send a client home with clarifying shampoo because I, I love consumers, but there's a habit of like, oh my God, my hair feels great. Let me do more of this. That's not how clarifying shampoo works. Right. So I send them home with a shampoo that is going to be cleansing enough, but not over cleansing for their lifestyle and what they do with their hair. A moisture shampoo, a moisture conditioner, and one to, well, probably two to three gels, typically, because one, I live in Georgia. I live in a very humid climate. It is a very hard place to just put one product on your hair. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not send my clients home with creams. I do not send my clients home typically with foams uh, because those have a lot harder learning curve and those are more um, style desires. Once you know the rules, you can break the rules with those things. Um, so I'm sending them with a very specific step-by-step -step of do this with this, do this with this, um, this is how you use the gels. And I think that's that's where we, we get a little bit like we don't have time or we don't have the budget. But when, I, when, when we look at um, people's bathrooms, when we look at people's bathrooms, we have enough of a product graveyard in there of cheap products and of stuff somebody on the Internet said buy that. That's a lie. You're telling me that you don't have the budget and that you don't have the time because you have the budget and the time to collect all of this randomness when I'm telling you literally five products. Um, so that's where you're starting out simply with high quality, great brand, great ingredient, all purpose shampoo, moisture shampoo, moisture conditioner, two gels. Mm -hmm. Simple routine. Go do that for three to five, three to five months. And then we can go tweak some things once you've mastered that basic minimalist um, routine. Yes. It's not a routine because hair is, actually, I just posted this in our community today. Hair is not a routine. Hair is a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it needs what it needs when it needs it. <laughs> it's a mindset of like, okay, I do this and that's it. Because if the hair is going to tell you what it needs. You just have to know how to hear it and listen to it. That's so true. I'm, I I actually love that you just said that. <laughs> that is so true because you're right. You can't take a brand new baby and be like, okay, well, I'm going to feed it this many times and I'm going to put it down for a nap at this time and that's what it needs. I'm going to walk away. That's it. There's different times. Mm -hmm. And every set, of, every set of curls has a different set of circumstances. So depending mm -hmm. on where you live, um, like the curl diameter, the different, you know, curl types, everything that goes along with this um, is all going to contribute to what your needs are. But as a beginner, definitely moisture, hydration, um, and a gel. Keep it simple. Yeah. So we're talking. I, I want to add one thing actually to that, to the gel situation, because when you say gel, like people will be like, oh, I'm just going to go buy some, you know, rock hard jelly um, when their hair uh, is dehydrated, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> High quality. Um, I like to use a plant-based gel. I think those are nice and they hold on to hydration a little bit better. So that would be like a flaxseed base or an aloe vera base. Um, and if you need more support, then you could use a more synthetic gel on top of that if you wanted to. But um, I don't want to get too crazy. And that's where you get into the weeds of like, we need an appointment for this. So exactly. JPA Freitas. That I know I'm not sharing the brands and the names of the five products I recommend. I recommend five different products for everybody. Yeah. Um, depending upon what, what hair is sitting in front of me, what the lifestyle of that person who is sitting in front of me, um, what they expect from their hair. And um, sometimes depending upon, again, I'm in Georgia. So is it wintertime when it's cooler, usually drier, although this winter was really wet for some reason, or is it summertime and 90 degrees outside and 100% humidity and it rains at two o'clock every afternoon? So yeah. even somebody who comes to see me in December, they might get a different situation or way to use what they already have at home yeah. um, for the summertime. So I can't tell you what I would I would give you. And I, I would be irresponsible. This is where we start sourcing stuff from the Internet without knowing what we're doing. I would be irresponsible for telling you to go buy one hundred and fifty dollars worth of hair products. And they're like, well, this stuff didn't work. She didn't know what she was talking about. No, no, no. I don't know you and I don't know your hair. <laughs> yeah. So, Teresa, you're going to want to talk to Michelle here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's I think it's important to to look at where the stylist that you're um where you are and find a stylist that knows your area cuz I'm in northern California and um we're pretty pretty good climate all the time. So we don't really vary in the products that we use from winter to summer really. I mean very little. Mhm. Mm cuz y'all y'all are fairly consistent like here it pretty much it was like 45 degrees this morning and like 75 this afternoon and it was humid earlier. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's really impossible for somebody who is, you know, not feeling your specific hair to recommend products for you, which is why it's really hard to find things from people on the internet. Um, and it's really best to speak to a curl specialist in your area uh, who knows about the climate and can speak specifically to your type of hair. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so for, for people who are new to embracing their curls, we've talked a little bit about which, which products they need. Um, what about a routine? Uh, how, not so much how do they use them, but what order do they go in? Um, what comes first? What, um, you know, are they combing them in? Just kind of the basics of how to use the products that we just talked about. Hey, Michelle, we're going to start this one? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I think that you know, it depends on, on the person. Like I said, with every client, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, the less you're disturbing the curl pattern, um, the better. You know, for myself, my hair is, is wavy. So for me, it requires a lot of scrunching to enhance curl. If I am to air dry, my hair is very straight. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's hair is a little bit different. You know, it depends on on what you're. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for me, I, I will not sit under. <laughs> sit under my, hair. my hair would be flatter than a pancake. So. <laughs> Notice the clips. Notice all. Yeah, it's it's diffuser and then it's hair dryer. It is all about setting for me. Um, as far as for when I'm talking to a new person, um, I think a lot of people don't like. It's really easy for us as hairstylists. Like, oh, yeah, it feels like this. We want it to feel this way. And I know what I'm looking for. But people don't necessarily know what they're looking for. They feel their own hair. We feel like so many different textures and types. And um, you're working on your own head and you've never felt it before. One thing, if you've been using, I don't want to get on this whole silicones are bad type of thing, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you've been using silicones, you don't know what your hair feels like. It feels mm -hmm. slick with the silicones on. And when you wash them out the first time, it might be really scary. I'm like, my hair feels so dry because mm -hmm. that's what I hear. My hair feels so dry. And that's actually just your hair. You've never felt it before. So get used to how your hair feels. And it takes a little while. So for me, when I have new clients in, um, for the longest time, it was I wasn't even cutting anybody the first time they came in. I was just um, detoxing out all of the stuff on the surface. Like that's a real good cleanse. That's what that means for me is a really good cleanse, pulling off the surface stuff, pulling out any mineral deposits because we have hard water. And if you have hard water, you've got mineral deposits in your hair. So pulling all that out so that you can get water inside so that your conditioners can actually work as opposed to repelling the hair away from each other or um, getting sticky and rubbery so that you don't get smooth curl clumps because that's what you're feeling sometimes. It's like, it, it just does, doesn't clump together. You need to remove everything out of the way so that your products mm -hmm. can then work. So that I was working with new people and then before we closed down and then sending them home for like two months to do that routine and not expect fantastic curls, but just to take care of the health of the hair so that when they came back in, we could review that process and then actually get a good cut. But now, I don't know, I think everybody needs to be doing that process at home because they're all, you're all gonna come in and bombard us as soon as we <laughs> open back up and we'll be like, whoa. So if you can take your care of your hair right now and like detox all that stuff off and then put work on getting hydration in, your curls will be much healthier and, and just in better shape to get a cut when we see you so that you can get a better um, result. Oh my. That, that goes for, that goes from a four hour cut to a two hour cut uh, because you're right. I actually I don't send anybody out without cutting because a lot of times when I'm seeing uh, most of my clients, well actually almost all my clients are tight curls yeah. um, and tight tight wavies. So I have to cut like they've got single strand knots and breakage and um, the patty mayonnaise because somebody cut their hair straight and so they got a whole force and D back thing going on back here. It's I, it's a whole lot that I get. Um, but for my hair, like I. Michelle, you said you have you have to diffuse. I cannot diffuse until my hair is like right. eighty percent dry, um, unless I want to fro, which is fine yeah. some days. But that's not what I was going for. If I actually went and like set my hair, I have I have to sit on the dry as well. Not with clips because it's gonna be full anyway. No. <laughs> but that's <laughs> a good point, though. Yeah. So I was like, how we can't really tell someone mm -hmm. without knowing their hair. I mean, you have the basics of what we, we like to call, I'm also part of um, the other half of Black Girl Curls and it's cleanse, condition, style. Mm -hmm. Cleanse, 
conditioned style. I, I'm not, I am not a fan of co-washing. Co-washing is something you do middle of the week. Mm -hmm. yep. Middle of the week, uh, just trying to tide you over to the next shampoo session. There's almost nothing in conditioner and a, and a lot of, I won't say all, but a lot of co-washes is actually going to then remove the oil, butter, silicone, environmental debris, everything that we're exposed to, um, especially for those of us who live in major metropolitan areas, we've got um, environmental debris just floating around here. There's five homes being built in my subdivision. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there is all kinds of stuff. And the pollen. I was going to say, you guys are having the pollening, right? Oh, yeah. But we are in the pollening. And so yeah. when I'm like, oh, you got Rona. No, I got allergies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when we're doing that, it's like we, we have to start at the cleansing process. That is the most important part of anything that we're going to do with curls. Because once your curls have... And, I, and we don't really talk about this much, but what is the purpose of conditioner? Conditioner has fatty acid conditioning agents, emollients, which are things that are going to come and lay on the hair. They don't absorb; they just lay on the hair. Humectants and vitamins, um, all in the in the ingredients. What that what the purpose of conditioner is to come in and smooth, meaning sit on the surface, smooth out hair. So if you never cleanse, you have dirt, oil, debris. The fried chicken you ate on Thursday, um, ta Taco Tuesday with the margaritas and the mezcal okay. you just had, and all that's greeting from your scalp. Your scalp is an escape point for what's going in your body. Yeah. And you're then going to come put some conditioner in that's just going to come smooth on over that. And so by the time you have layers and layers of conditioner on the hair, that's just smoothed it out and smoothed it out and smoothed it out. Yes, you get to a point where it feels soft. And that is an artificial dry soft, especially because if that conditioner has a lot more oil content or um, silicone content, PEG content, um, glycol, there's there's a couple of other ingredients that are in there. And the reason why we don't say product brands, because the brands I actually, a lot of us use the same brands, but we have some brands that we use separately. And we can tell you Here's five products from what we keep in this, our stash and our salons that will achieve the same result, but they will be different products. Mm -hmm. But they also have to teach you how we use them to do what we do um, to get the results that you're looking for. So I did want to answer her, her question about needing help. This is where you need to grab one of these virtual consultations. If you have tight curls and you have relaxed hair, then you want to go for somebody who me, works with tight curls. If you go to, um, do you mind if I, I tell her we have a directory of stylists? Right. <laughs> okay. uh, at Black Curl Magic, there's a directory of stylists. There's actually one at Sunrise. It shouldn't be that far away from um, for Lauderdale. They'd be, they might be able to help you out uh, because if you have six inches of curly hair and like 10 inches of relaxed hair, they're going to be fighting each other. They're literally yes. going to be fighting each other. And it's not the natural hair. It's the relaxed hair. Yes. And that's what's going to give you the grief. The natural hair is sitting there like, I'm just waiting on you. Yes. <laughs> so yes. that's where you're going to probably, that's where you're probably having your struggles. Um, and when you have those, uh, your curls are like Stephanie. Okay. Yeah. Even if you have a relaxed one, they're still going to keep, give you, <laughs> Stephanie's curls aren't that far off. They're finer and silkier than mine, but they're not that far off than mine. Um, but if you still have a relaxer on your ends, your ends are what's going to be doing this. Yeah. They're going to be doing like this and you're going to be fighting. And then you also have to treat that relaxed hair like it's natural and probably be replacing the protein that you're not, that you don't have in that relaxed hair. Because relaxers come and change the entire protein structure of hair. So you need probably need that support as well. Yeah. Can you guys talk a little bit about the importance of water um, mm -hmm. for people who are coming into this new um uh, we've talked about products and routine, but so much of it is about the hydration and the water. Um, yeah, everybody thinks it's like the conditioner, right? Like I need more conditioner. I need more yeah. conditioner. Maybe it's not this conditioner. I need another conditioner. Uh, what you need is the water to get into your hair. And the water should be able to pass in and out freely. Like I want to just say that real quick. The water should be able to pass in and out of your hair freely. And it is the humectants and the left behind conditioner that are holding on to a little bit of that extra water. But you need the water in the hair, not just on the hair. So that's why um, cleansing, that's why Elise was saying cleansing is so important. And I think when you go out there in the curly world, uh, the, the, the dark curly world, right into the web, and you're like searching for whatever, you're like, oh, we shouldn't be washing. No shampoo, shampoo, no shampoo. But I, I think all of us here are in agreement in that. Yes, little head nod. Yeah. Washing is so important, but washing every day 
isn't going to be a good idea. So, so mm -hmm. part of it is right. And, um, but cleansing is, is so important so that you can get water in, you need more water. And then whenever I'm talking to a client about like their curl is separating, it's not staying together in a clump, you need more water. And if the water didn't do it, then add some more product. Mm -hmm. And that applies to all curl diameters. Um, there we got a lot of people like, well, my hair is 4C or my hair is like 4A. And I'm like, so what? <laughs> <laughs> the concepts are actually the same. Um, yeah. You may need a slightly, a little bit more slip to get your fingers. So you may need a little bit more hold. Um, you may have to change your drying procedures, but the hair is the same. You gotta, that hair has to get water. I was actually just answering a comment um, on Instagram where somebody's like, well, if you don't add a moisture uh, product underneath your holding product, your hair is going to be dry. And I'm like, no, that's why your hair is dry. By all the milks and the butters and the this and the that trying to moisturize and that moisture layer is what's actually impeding the water from getting in the hair. So I, I've had clients go in and I wet their hair and I have them feel it. And then after I've detoxed them, I have them feel it again. And the difference between hair that has water sitting on it and hair that has actually absorbed water. It's very, there's a two very different feelings of hair. Once that hair is sucked in water, like a sponge, everything that we put on top of it is for that hair to hold that in like a sponge. So when we're coming back on the back end with botanical gels that have humectants in them, humectants are the actual ingredients um, in styling products that help the water that's in the hair to stay in the hair. They also help to attract moisture from the atmosphere. So that's why for those of us who live in humid climates like Georgia, oftentimes we're, we need a topper to kind of stop that, like grabbing the moisture from the atmosphere because it's all the moisture from the atmosphere and we're going to be big poof balls. And, and <laughs> conversely, um, say in Northern California or Southern California where it's really dry, the atmosphere will try to pull all that water that's in the hair out. So then you still need something to close that up. We have not found a miracle gel yet that does it all in one solution. It's not plastic. It's just, it hasn't happened. Can't wait till it happens. Um, but all of that, everything that we are doing in styling is surrounding that water in the hair and then strategically removing the water to create a set. If we understand setting. The basic concept of setting, whether it's a pin curl or roller set, whatever, is taking the hair from wet to dry in a form. And so when yes. we, set the form, we take it from wet to dry. And if we've already had a bunch of water internally, that water is still there for four to seven days. And once our hair has been set into the style we wanted to be in. And I think yes. myself on my personal journey, when I was discovering my my waves and my curls, I, I think that hydration was the most underestimated of all things that were necessary in my routine. Um, you know, I, I think that through the years, if, if you're just new to transitioning, you have no idea about, about the importance mm -hmm. of hydration and just truly how much water is necessary. Lots. Right. Cool. Uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, we're all stuck at home. Nobody's really seeing us unless we're doing uh, video calls. And I know a lot of people are. But um, is now a good time? Well, we we did establish that now is a good time to be doing things like detoxing your hair so that when you do get to go see your stylist, they can just go in and do a really good cut for you. Um, but is now a good time to be trying new products, new techniques, new things. Um, and uh, what should people definitely not do right now? <laughs> well, they can't see the stylist. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please don't cut your own hair. Let's <laughs> start there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, there's. There's a lot of things that you shouldn't shouldn't be doing. Um, again, it's easy to fall down the rabbit hole, but start mm -hmm. with a simple a simple uh, routine, like like we had already stated. Concentrate on on hydration, on um, you know a routine of a set. However, it is that you decide that you're going to set your particular style, depending on um, you know the curl type, curl diameter, um, depending on 
how it is that you want to wear your hair. You know, before you find a stylist, find pictures of, of your goals, find pictures of the type of hair that you'd like to have. Um, so that way, when you do come in and talk to a stylist, you'll be prepared, knowing what it is you want, what you don't want. And then we can have the discussion of, of what's possible with your hair. Um, because a lot of times people have unreal, unrealistic expectations. So it's a yep. great time to explore and, and kind of get a rhythm and get a routine um, that then you can go and meet with a curl specialist and then perfect that routine. Yeah, yeah. you can also, um, I'm not a panelist, but I think for me too, it's just, um, you know, hearing these women say so often, you know, the, the recommendations that everybody wants them to make it's all, it's a, so much of it is based on what you want your hair to look yes. like. And part of it is what your hair will do. And part of yes. it is what you want it to do. Yes. Um, it looks like this today, but I could make it look bigger and frizzier if I wanted yeah. to. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you can take this time now while you're at home and you're not running into your coworkers to figure out what it is that you like um, yeah. your hair to look like. Uh, if you like it bigger or more controlled or um, you know, half back or whatever, you know, you can play with it and, and not have anyone, you know, judging you uh, for what you're doing with it and kind of figure out what you want your hair to do. Because then when you do go into one of these stylists and you say, I really like this haircut, is this possible? Then not only can you have the discussion about if your hair will actually do that, but then you can also figure out, you know, how to style it. And then you can talk about which products um, might be good for you because it's all about what you want it to look like at the end. And, and like you said, what you want it to look like and what it is capable of looking like. I think that's so huge is one mindset, like the mindset of like, okay, um, I'm accepting my curls. I'm going to embrace my curls. That's one thing. But then what can my curls actually do? Um, for instance, my hair is swavy and that would be like straight wavy so if i don't do anything to it it's it's straight all the way here with like a kick and a, a flip and some parts look fuzzy um but i can i i, I say this i say this like uh, i can make it straight really easily i don't want to so i say that and i know <laughs> that might be like what but no really i don't want to um i wore my hair straight for a long time and i feel for me it just doesn't it's not my personality it's just flat and straight and for a long time honest i thought that's all it could do and if that's you out there in the world if that's what you think your hair you have to blow dry it, you have to flat iron it because that's what it can do and if you don't if you do something else to it like let's say you tried to go curly and you air dried it because that's what you were told is the best thing for your hair if you have hair like mine and you air dried it that was it was crap it was absolute crap it looked terrible so the best thing you could do was blow dry it and I mean, I'm serious, but like, you know, this is, I, um, I get body and I get fullness and I get, my hair will actually last for a couple of days. I'm going to do it right now. And it'll, you know, it'll be here for me, but, and look, I'm not being gentle with it because I dried it hundred percent. You guys saw me with my hood dryer. I did it, <laughs> you know, and it can be here, but if your hair is tighter curls, you probably don't want to do this because, um, there's hair that is clumping naturally and there's hair that's separating naturally and sometimes it's really hard to get those tighter curls or tighter tight waves to stay together and they want to separate out or if it's a tiny coil it's going to separate out and you don't get it back together again until you get it wet that's just the fact so you may not want to be doing all this this is something for someone that has looser hair that's trying to get i lost a whole bunch of my hair guys and this wasn't like a diva situation this i know you might not be all in that. It's just a regularly scheduled hair dump. It happens to me every three years on top of my head. It's normal. Right now I am missing like half of the top of my head and it is a tra it is a straight tragedy right now. But I'm still doing all my things because even with half of my hair gone, this is way better. This is way better. And for my hair type, tomorrow it's going to be looser and the next day it's going to be looser, but I still have body and I accept that. So I'm not trying to say my day two and day three. When I say I wear my hair for three, sometimes four days, I'm not saying it looks like this, like, you know, full and you see a curl. It might be wavy. 
you guys saw me in Georgia in our panelists meeting. I felt all embarrassed. <laughs> I was all with all of them and their hair looked amazing. It's all curly because it's curly, right? So I still have curl envy. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, we're gonna go out to dinner. I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo my hair because it was looking just kind of like a little bit of a finger wave. And that was a tragedy. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have, I just should have left it be because <laughs> I didn't have time to redo the whole thing. It was in Georgia and the dew point was like 17. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a bad idea. You don't just add a little bit of water to your hair and try and make it curly again and that you don't, you don't do that. So, you know, so be realistic and accept what your hair can do and then accept it on its stage of the journey. Um, as soon as I did it, I was like, what did I do? It was so much better in the loose finger wave. It looked so much better than me trying to, you know, work at it. And it was just because I was hanging out with curly girls and, you know, stylists and I was all like a little bit curl envy. <laughs> but I should have just accepted what my hair does because that's what it does. So yeah, you know. <laughs> well, that's a great time to say with, with bobby pins. Hmm. Not scissors, not products, <laughs> bobby pins. Yes, I love what Aisha did. <laughs> yeah. I was like, she said, I was like, I want to just like, please do this, please. We have to see we need this in so our lives. Um, because right now, this is not the time to go buy five million products. Especially if you have it nailed down, like this is what I do, and being able to consistently get results. Master one thing. Mm -hmm. Master the products you have, or and or recognize that hey, I got a whole bunch of crap. Let me talk to somebody who can guide me to purchasing a few products that are going to be high quality, and then stick to learning how to use it because it. It's very interesting. In our digital salon, we get a lot of people and they're like on their second or third wash and go to be like, I don't know why it's freezing. <laughs> okay. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been doing wash and goes on people in many climates, in many places, other than myself for 10 years. It's very unfair for someone who just started, who's just not even just getting the physical like dexterity to properly do their hair at home to then compare and say, well, my hair doesn't look like what you did. And I'm like, people pay me real American dollars mm -hmm. for this. I, I need to, like, you never paid me for that. No, they would never pay me. So I need mine to look different. But this is where the time we take to practice, to hone and say, hmm, I use a little too much of this, not enough that, it's a little too big, it's a little too small. Um, but perfecting what we're doing. And then if we're like, hmm, I want to, like Stephanie said, I, I need to figure out if I want up or down or bigger or flatter, use some bobby pins. <clears throat> use Try to use a pick. I'm not a very good yeah. fan because I like when life, uh, my hair doesn't really lay flat. It's kind of big on day one, but it grows and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I won't, I go like 10 days and then 10, day 10 looks nothing like day one, like uh, Gina said. So it's, about working on accepting mm -hmm. what your hair is doing, working on your physical dexterity, working on understanding how to achieve what you want, and then knowing that is it realistic for me to be able to achieve it, and then does my hair do it? Um, because we, we have to grant ourselves a lot more grace, especially yes. folks who don't have a natural knack for hair or who are not like a professional. Yes, your set may not look like one of us did it because again, we do this day in and day out and half for years, but your hair is going to look great as you practice it. Mm -hmm. practice. Also, dry dehydrated frizz looks totally different than hydrated, just healthy frizz. I mean, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sharon said, not a time to unicorn cut either. Yes. Mm. Right. Oh. Right. You know, the percentage of people that can do a unicorn cut and look good is very small. What's a unicorn cut? Please oh, tell me. Oh, girl. It's when you pull everything forward like a unicorn horn and then you cut. Oh, that's it. not something anybody with tight curls is down here. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. No, a lot of people talk about it in groups like, oh, I did a unicorn cut. I did a double unicorn cut. They make up all these names. And then um, they do this. And some people are like, oh, it looked all right. And then a lot of people go, yeah, I did that. And it didn't work out. And it has to do with, you know, your head shape has a lot to do with it. Your growth patterns have a lot to do with it. Your density has a lot to do with it. So all those things we take into account when we're cutting. So if you're going to do this one size fits all, it's not going to come out one size fits all. Your head shape has a lot to do with it. Like I said, your growth pattern and it's going to fall and lay differently. Um, like look, look up. It's going to look like a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, those are, you know. I mean, moms are coming back. I was gonna say, <laughs> but intentionally. 
<laughs> yes, yes, intentional bullets that are that are fast. Make it fast. <laughs> yes. Let's talk a little about um, making your hair last. Uh, like I said at the beginning, just because we have a lot of time to wash our hair now doesn't mean that we want to. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know that I particularly during this time have not washed my hair as frequently just because I'm not going anywhere. It doesn't need to look that great. Um, so I just wash it when it needs it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, how to make your hair last um, as far as what you can do on day one to ensure that and also what you can do around um, sleeping and sort of, uh, you know, how, how other things you can do outside of setting your hair on day one to take you further into the week with your hair so you don't have to, um, you know, re redo it every two days or whatever, every day, every two days. You know what I'm going to say? <laughs> Set your hair you, on day You already know what I'm going to say. I'm going to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> Take the time to dry it <laughs> before you touch it. I know that's not everyone's story, but um, if your curls fall out, if you're more in line with a wavy um, hair, if your curls are going to fall out, then they're not going to last if you just air dried them. They're not going to, they're not going to be there for you multiple days. Michelle, how about you? Yeah, I think part of protecting my hair goes into uh, the sleep, <clears throat> excuse me, the sleep routine. Um, I have run the gamut. I have tried everything from a buff to a scarf to a bonnet <laughs> to just a silk pillowcase. And for my hair personally, I don't move around too much in my sleep. So a silk pillowcase with my hair put up on the pillowcase works sufficiently for me. Um, whereas for my hair, Sorry, my lighting's off today, guys. Um, for me, when it comes to um, wearing a buff, it really um, straightens my hair and um, flattens my hair. So for me, I, I started with a buff thinking that it was going to be the end all be all. And, and for my hair, it was not. Um, again, it was. Um, I think everybody has to do some trial and error. Um, but my curlier girls, I typically put them... Um, so just a bonnet or a scarf or something of that nature. And for me, it's going to be the silk or satin pillowcase. Yeah, I sleep like a banshee. So <laughs> um, typically, well, I, I just cut a lot of my hair off about a year ago. My hair was about that long. Um, and at that point, I was pineappling and either putting a bonnet on or sleeping on a satin pillowcase. My hair is about that long now. And um, I just sleep on the satin pillowcase because I don't care. <laughs> it's going to frizz regardless. Um, but for longevity, it, it, everything leads back to the set. I can't, we can't stress it enough. I know you said like, what about the set? So if the set isn't set, if you don't have enough hold, you, I, I, I want to scream or I want to know every time somebody asks me, well, I want soft hair on day one, but you better throw on day two. <laughs> you are going to be the cast, the crunch, and not to just be all like, I want big hair. Because we see that we see the internet bloggers, we see the influencers, and they're like, I want to get, I'm going like this. And I'm going like, I'm taking my pick and I'm going like that. And they have all this huge big hair. And I'm like, okay, every touch that you do <laughs> is going to reduce the amount of days that you're going to be able to get with that hair. So let life, yes. flow. especially for my tight curls, my tight coilies, my tight wavies. It's like, let life love it. It's going to live its life. So you're you're not setting for day one, day two, unless you have someplace to go. You're setting for day three through seven. If you can get right out past that, great. If you can't, shampoo your hair. Um, if you're working out every day and sweating, um, I used to take hip hop before outside clothes. And I would just kind of put my hair. Let this, because typically if you don't let the ends get sweaty, if you're just letting your scalp get sweaty, you let your scalp dry. Mm -hmm take it down, let the hair dry. The more disturbance that you create on the hair, the less your, the more your set's going to frizz. Mm -hmm. um, but for people who sweat a lot in their scalps, um, you may need a shampoo and condition and restyle sooner than somebody else. You may be on a four day, you may be on a five day, you may be on that seven day if your scalp doesn't get itchy. Um, so this is where, again, your hair is not a routine, it's a baby. So you have to listen to what your scalp is telling you. Um, not necessarily your hair because your scalp is skin. We can we can take care of hair all day, but if you don't take care of that skin that the hair grows out of, you're gonna have some issues. 
We have actually an article uh, in the upcoming issue number seven about uh, working out and your scalp and sweating and when you should wash and all of that kind of thing. And um, it's actually, uh, if you pre-order it now at readcurl.com, uh, it is free shipping uh, through tonight. So go Ooh. to yours. Nice. Um, we have a, <laughs> we're definitely talking um, workout hair and we have, uh, I won't give it away, but we have lots of people who work out a lot talking about what they do with their hair um, when they are doing some athletic things. Um, so yeah, go check that out. Issue number seven, pre-order it uh, with free shipping tonight. Um, uh, as far as uh, for me, like sleeping and wearing my hair into multiple days, this is day one. I just washed it uh, just for you guys um, today. So I tend to stay pretty controlled on day one because it is going to get more voluminous and frizzier the more I wear it. I sleep with a buff on um, and a silk pillowcase. <laughs> But I really only have the silk pillowcase because once I get to day two or three, and I'm just going to start wearing my hair up for the next couple of days. I don't bother with the buff after that. So, but I do keep the, the silk pillowcase on just for, you know, uh, keeping, keeping it healthier and that kind of thing. Um, and also I like it. It's fancy. Um, <laughs> it's but, a little luxury right here. <laughs> it feels so nice. I like um, so yeah, I can't buff. I, I can't wear, use a buff a little more controlled on the, on the first day um, so that I can get more days out of it. And so, you know, like Elise was saying, if you mess with it a lot and get it really big and set the way you want it to on day one, you're, that's it. You know, it's going to be bigger and frizzier <laughs> after that. Um, so prepare for, you know, what you want through the week um, when you're getting ready on your day one set. So that actually makes me think about something. So when I have clients who have been with me for a while, they come back in and I am confident that their routine is, is good and they don't want to waste all the time in the salon doing all the things when they can do that at home. So I'll have them come in ready mm -hmm. with their hair set and I'll do a dry cut. So it's pretty fast. You're only in there for about 45 minutes. So that's less time in the salon for you and it's less expensive after you've gotten the routine down. But here's the thing. They come in with their hair, with their set. And after the cut, I've worked through it. It's this gorgeous big shape, right, that you see a lot of times on Instagram. And then they they leave with that, right? And it's going to be less time. Now that I've moved it through, it's going to be less time for that wash day for them. Yeah. If they're coming in for a full service and they're coming in and they're set, let's say they're set and I cut them and then we go back and they've, they've got this gorgeous shape and they go back and we wash, then it's much more condensed, after it's been set in preparation. So they're leaving a little more condensed. They're leaving so that they can wear it a couple more days. Cause like everyone's saying, the more that you, the more that you zhuzh and fluff and make it big and pick and add hairspray and add product on day one, it's going to look great for that Instagram photo, but it's not going to live for you. You're not going to get that. You know um, I, I know some wavy influencers will will go on and they'll make their hair really, really big and then they'll show their refreshing. And it's just a whole bunch of, of diffuser, you know, like this with, with more product. I guarantee you, it doesn't feel good. I guarantee you it doesn't feel good. <laughs> it's all, I know. I, I don't like, personally, I like hair that is, um, is touchable for me. I can't do that whole day one condensed thing. Cause you guys saw me at the beginning with my clips. And if you didn't go back and look at it, um, I it, think it's it, cute. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when it was well, this is fine, but when it was all in its cast and I and you can see my scalp. No, I gotta do some fluffing. So yeah. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, this is definitely fluffed. It's just not fluffed like a lot. Right, like, right. Cast, but yeah. For sleeping though, sometimes like I can't wear a buff. And my hair's long not not long enough for a pineapple. That's just ridiculous. I'm not gonna just pineapple that like that's not going to work out so I just sleep on my satin pillowcase and if I'm particularly in love with like this and, and it because it was flat then I'll just take a couple clips and I'll just like clip right up on the very very top my husband loves it <laughs> I'll just like clip a couple just like you know, like that like hey baby do what you gotta do <laughs> <laughs> and then that way I at least preserve some of the height that I've worked so hard for Mm -hmm. So since we're talking about kind of wearing your hair into day two, three, four, teen, um, 
let's say uh, since we're all stuck at home right now, uh, somebody's boss wants to have a video conference in 10 minutes and uh, I'm on day, I don't know what hair. Um, what do you recommend? <laughs> You're going to get what comes out this body. <laughs> You're going to be happy. Because <laughs> unless you get somebody over here to take care of this three-year-old and clean this house, <laughs> you going to get what you get. Yeah. I mean, a cute head, head wrap is enough. Awesome. Head wrap is cute. Head yep. Head, updo. Messy bone. <laughs> I'm just going to, you know, throw in a little... There you go. Um, bow, and I'm just gonna yeah. go. You know, if I felt if my hair is fine today, but if it wasn't, I'd just be like, I'm just gonna bow it, or I'm gonna take maybe I'll take this side and I'll just like clip it back, and maybe I'll like put a little clip right there, and then I'll feel good like that. But yeah, yeah, don't be afraid of clips and bows and headbands, like, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, so we had a question from Instagram from uh, Lori about DIY treatments. Um, mm -hmm while we're at home, is there any any DIY treatment that is actually uh, useful? Um, and if so, what is that? I think I, I know what the answer is. <laughs> My face. My face is the answer. <laughs> the groceries. Yeah. Eat, yeah. Eat, eat them. Your hair does not have a digestive system. The nutrients... And oils and things that are in your food are not digestible or accessible by your hair. The yep. reason why we have hair products, and sometimes they can have very similar ingredients. But when you look on that bottle of product, if it was formulated correctly, you will see it was hydrogenated, which means it was processed in a way that your hair can actually benefit from it. Eat the groceries, anime. <laughs> Make salad. Make salad. Get those good nutrients in your body and then your body will feed your bloodstream and your bloodstream will feed your hair follicle and then you will grow really pretty hair. <laughs> That's how you bring it. And then yeah. you shampoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, you talked a little bit earlier about specifically why. Um, well, when... Uh, when we were chatting a little bit before yeah. we started the live, uh, you know, I was talking a little bit about why specifically um, home DIY grocery treatments aren't always um, the best. Can you talk a little bit about why yeah. that is? So the molecular weights of those um, whole ingredients are too large to penetrate inside the strand and it's just going to sit on the surface. So if it's sitting on the surface, it's likely going to weigh down and build up which any kind of buildup is then going to block hydration from getting in. And what is it we talked about a little bit ago? We need hydration. That's water. And we need that inside the hair. So those DIY things that you're doing, those aren't going inside your hair. I don't care if you're sitting there with a, a, a heated bonnet. If you're sitting there underneath a hood dryer like I've got for 30 minutes, that's going to raise up the cuticle. It's going to swell. It's raising the cuticle. It's not like a door. It doesn't open up like this. It's the whole strand swells up a little bit. So if you're, if you're swelling your hair strand and then plugging it full of high um, molecular weight molecule things, they're just going to sit in there. Then, the, then it can't shut all the way. So that's not a healthy thing to do for your hair. Um, like Elise said, eat those things and use things that were formulated for hair instead. I mean, there are, it's a very, very small percentage of people that have hair that can handle some of the larger molecules, but you won't know who you are. <laughs> and you're just going to hate your hair. I did an experiment just about two years ago. Ooh. I was making some brunch and I cracked an egg and I, I mixed it in a bowl and I made scrambled eggs. I had a baby at the time, but I kind of compared it to like, if you're making brunch, you got the mimosa, you got the eggs, you don't rinse that egg bowl immediately. You come back to that egg bowl three hours later, it is, you have, you have to soak it. And then you have to scrub it. And that's what we're doing. When we're putting eggs in our hair, when we're putting mayo in our hair, that is what is sitting on there and it's hardening. And also food rots. So if you're not going back and shampooing the food that is literally like plastered to your hair again, like the uh, eggs in the bowl that you just set out after having breakfast and you didn't rinse, and you don't shampoo all that off, you have rotting food 
sitting on your hair. This did not happen to me, but it happened to a fellow curl artist of mine in Chicago. She had a client come to her and she had her hair all kind of wrapped up in a bun. And so she takes the client's bun down. The stitch of rotted avocado just smacks her in the face. And this client has pieces of rotted avocado in her hair. Because if you take an avocado and you mash it, and you accidentally get it someplace and you don't like wash your hands of it or you don't shampoo it off of the hair, you're going to have rotted pieces of food sitting in that hair, manifesting itself on your scalp, inviting bacteria, fungi, the things that live and feed off of that rotted food material on your hair and on your scalp. We don't want that. We don't want that at all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's a hard no for me. I don't cook, so I'm certainly not going to be cooking up hair products. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, so I actually had a client. So I was talking about this a little bit ago. I actually had a client who was coming in to see me regularly and her hair was getting in better and better shape. And then um, she had a lifestyle situation change so that she had to, uh, you know, save some of her money, totally understandable. And she thought she would just do the DIY route. And um, she did that for a couple of months and it seemed okay at the beginning. And then by the time she saw me again, because she decided she needed to see me again, her hair was a disaster. It was an absolute disaster. It, it was stringy, greasy looking and it's, it smelled strange. And she admitted that she's like, I don't know what to do. Help me. And so we got her back on the path and she got the, the products that, you know, I recommend only because I use them. So these high, the high price products and everything's like, Oh, the stylists are just trying to sell you products. They're just trying to sell you something to make money. It's because they work. It's because we use them in and out. We know how to use them and they work. I can't tell you to go to the grocery store and buy some, what I don't even want to say anything, but what you know, what's at the drugstore? I can't tell you that because I can't guarantee you that it's going to work. I don't know what it's going to do, and that product's not going to stand behind me as a professional, licensed professional. So, as a licensed professional, your license is on the line. You know, I mean, a lot of complaints your come through. In your insurance, in your insurance, thank you, <laughs> are on the line. So we have to stand by by products that are going to stand behind us and that we know work. So they're higher quality, um, they're higher concentration, um, and we use them. So I can safely say I know this will work. Maybe there is a different product that might work slightly, like like marginally better. For you than this out there but this is what i use and i i i stand behind it and I, it works for me and it works for you know the majority of my clients that i i i recommend them to so that's why we do that and yes yeah, sometimes sometimes two or three different products are going to be layered on your hair sometimes depending on your client de climate sometimes depending on your hydration your hair's ability to hold water's level you may need to layer products sometimes you're going to be your hair is going to be in a great condition on its own and you're in this great climate you may only need one so you can't just be like oh i'm a one and done all the time just like elise was saying in the beginning it's not like you have to think about your hair as like a baby. It needs different things at different times. And you've got to be open to that fluidity. You've got to listen to what it's saying and feel it. Mm -hmm. So that's why that whole idea of not using things that are going to build up on the hair, heavy butters and silicones are masking your hair's texture. You don't know what your hair needs. You're expecting the product to perform for you. Instead of knowing what your hair is going to do and what it needs and listening to it, you might alter it up a little bit. Like I said, here where I live, um, the majority of people have a pretty similar con consistent routine year round. Some people um, need to change it up a little bit, but for the most part, it's pretty, pretty good, normal, temperate climate, but that's not no, everywhere. I want, I do want to address that comment. Cause it sounds like either somebody hurt you or you don't have a clear understanding of how hair works or you don't go to see somebody regularly. <laughs> it sounds like you might go see somebody every so often who you don't have a relationship with, um, who is just trying to fix your hair. See, there's two different types of clients. And I'll speak specifically to Lily Novi. There's two types of clients. There's the client who's consistent. There's the client who is plugged in and is invested. And when we come up with solutions in the salon, because they may come in, their hair may have been dragged through the mud. It might have been on, on its last leg about to like be like, I escaped from your head. And we put a plan together to have to put a compromise of you're going to have a great style result and you're going to have improved hair health. And that plugged in client comes back for their maintenance cuts. 
they come back for their maintenance clarifying because yes, when you're coming to see me every 10 to 16 weeks, it's not the product. It's not the fault of the product. It's the fact that what we do, how we live and the moisturizing products that I've sent you home with, yes, we're going to have to clarify again. You have hard water, you have calcium, magnesium, copper, um, whatever else is in your pipes. I'm from Chicago. I used to own a salon two blocks away from the lake. The closer you are to the lake, more sediment you have in your water the more our pipes are old. So everything that is collected on its way to your shower, to your bathroom is on your hair. Every single thing that you've eaten is on your scalp, is on your hair. Every club that you have been to is on your hair. And so when we come in, if you're, again, that plugged in client, that second time, that third time, often we are doing a clarifying treatment mm -hmm. because you are completely clarified for that first time, especially if you were using shea butter, coconut oil, castor oil, eco styler, wet line, all kinds of stuff on your hair. It's a progression. But that plugged in client, what happens is even if they started out on the last legs of their hair, by the time they've gotten to eight to 12 months with, with staying consistent with the routine, we are not clarifying every time. Because mm -hmm. their hair has reached another level. It's reached another point of hydration. They're able to execute the style. And they may not need those three products. They may only need one. They may need two on occasion because their hair has gone from level one to level five. Now, there's another type of client who just comes in and has us mm -hmm. solve problems. Now, mm -hmm. that's not a problem. I love solving problems. I'm like, ooh, I got to put some real deep thought into that. Because yes. you know that person's going to be like, wait, I want you to impress me. <laughs> then I don't want you to charge me that much money, but you're bringing to me your hair on life support. Yeah. And I'm supposed to have you leaving the salon looking fly and fabulous. And so we're going to clarify the heck about this hair. And we are going to condition it to this. We're going to Olaplex this hair. We're going to style it because then we have to, we have to, just as Gina said, your hair is on life support. Life support hair can't, I can't just put one product and be like, I had good. And you'll be like, why do I look like a frizzy hot mess? So which way do you want it? Is that, are we, are we willing to take that journey? Are we willing to stay consistent? Are we willing to be that plugged in client to get the results that we're seeking? Or are we thinking that our, our, our stylists are just nickeling and diming us because of they're selling, you need this treatment. Not because of the two or three products that you've been using, but because of life, because of life, because of the condition your hair was when we got started. And so that's where I've, I've gotten to the point of my career where I don't even really work with those clients anymore because I'm not here to prove myself to you. I got receipts. Everybody has receipts. And if this is a partnership, working with a stylist is a partnership. Mm -hmm. I do my work. You mm -hmm. go home and do your work. You come back. We work together. Yes. And we achieve your hair goals. I've achieved my hair goals over and over mm -hmm. and over. And I've achieved, I've achieved them for other clients. Now, each new client that sits in our chair, we're creating that partnership to get you from here to here. And that's why it's the journey. You know? Yeah. And I want to speak to that, too, because, you know, there are, I'm not going to say there aren't stylists out there. Like, you guys are with me. I'm not going to say there are, aren't not stylists out there who are just going to sell you, who aren't actually putting the time in. I'm not going to say it. I won't say that because I know that there are, there's hundreds and thousands and millions of stylists in the country. Okay. But you have to do your part. You have to do your part in finding the stylist that's for you. You can't just go and sit in someone's chair and be like, all right, I'm going to come in here and I want this done. Find the right one. There's like, go to Instagram, go check out their work um, schedule. I mean, if the, if your, your stylist does consultation, then do that. Or, you know, just follow them for a while. I know a lot of people just follow me for a while. Like, I've been following you for seven months and now I'm finally ready. And I'm like, oh, good. I'm glad I won you over finally. But, you know, I'm <laughs> going on my day. I... I am looking at the health of the hair. That's what my priority is, is the health of the hair and the um, the success of my clients. I don't know. Uh, I don't know any client, at least stylists who don't have a, a heart of gold. I don't know a stylist. You don't go into this business without a heart of gold, without a service mentality. You just don't. Um, I mean, right? You don't. 
Not curls. We, if something goes on wrong in the salon, I am having nightmares about it. I am thinking about it for days. If someone, I'm like, oh my God, I wonder yes. how, how did that work out for Sharon? I don't even know. I really hope that worked out. And I'll, I'll tell every single person, let me know how this goes. Let me know how your hair is doing in three days. Because I actually want to know. I want to make sure for one, I want to make sure that what I'm telling you is working. I want to make sure that you're having success. Because if you're not having success, then you're not happy with me. If you're not happy with me. You're not going to tell people to come see me. You're not telling people to come see me. I'm out of business. So I need you to have success. That is my success rides on your success. So therefore, I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't need. I'm not going to tell you anything that's not going to work. Right. And Irene Garcia, I see she said, um, investing in each other. And it's exactly that. It's it's about building a relationship. Each client that comes and sits in my chair, um, you take the time to get to know not only the person, but to get to know their hair. And mm -hmm. you grow together. You really do. 100%. Thank you guys. That was a lot of really good information to No, I don't mean it in a bad way. It's just, a, you know, it's, it's good information to put out there and for people to digest and think about. Um, we have one more question from uh, Instagram earlier on. If we missed your question and you typed it earlier on in the live stream, type it in again so we can um, see if we can address it before we wrap up here. We're a little, we're just in an hour now. So um, we're going to wrap this up soon. Um, but if we missed your question before, type it in again and we'll see if we can get to it. But the last question I have on my list here was from Beth, who says that um, her hair has been growing out and one side of it, because of her pattern, is a little shorter than the other right now. And obviously she can't get in to see her stylist. So, um, you know, what can she, what can she do right now uh, to, to work with that? One side is short, hold on. One side is shorter because of. I think her curl, just the way her curl, the curl patterns, patterns are different. Grows. Yeah. Diffuse the loose pattern and don't diffuse the tight. Mm. Boom. Okay. <laughs> I rock the high left, low right, and make it like the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna do whatever comes out this diffuser, this bonnet, <laughs> fire. Well, and I think uh, you know, Elise said too, you can do a lot with bobby pins. Yeah. Oh, yes. If one side is not, if you're not happy with it, you know, clip it up or do something cute with it or, you know, make them intentionally uneven. And then it looks like you did that on purpose. And hopefully mm -hmm. that will help. Or, um, or you could even tuck behind the ear, something yeah, like that. That's that's cute. <laughs> I know. So everyone keeps asking, when are you, when are, when am I going to make my appointment? I know I had to get it canceled. Can I be in May 1st? Are you going to open up May 1st? Um, I don't know about you guys. I'm pretty sure with you guys, it's the same thing. We have no idea. We don't know when it's going to, when we're going to open it back up. So I'm not taking any time to reschedule any clients right now. And most stylists aren't. And if they're smart, they're not because we don't know what we're going to do and we might have to cancel it again. And it sucks. But there's a lot of clients out there, like we said earlier, who are doing online consultations, um, who have courses that can help you through some of the process so that you can get your hair in better shape during this time. Um, and just try working with your natural curls. If you're, if you're new to it, try working with it and listen to this, you know, a couple times again and, and call somebody and get some advice one on one. Um, it is a good time. To, to do that, just to experiment. Yeah, get get salon ready. Cause right now I, I know for me, um, because I'm pregnant, I'm, I guess I should make like a full announcement since this is what I'm telling everybody. Um, <laughs> even when outside opens up, I'm not opening back up uh, right. because I live in a state that barely has any testing that the exactly. governor doesn't seem to know what is going on. Uh, and <laughs> it seems to be a complete shit show. So I'm just gonna be like, I'm gonna let y'all be outside for 30 to 60 days first. <laughs> right, right. Oh and my then, God. And then I'll come back in. Uh, yeah, um, there's no social distancing in the salon from your stylist. And none. for us, like maybe for you guys, you'll be like, I'll wear a mask. Maybe she's wearing a mask or he, and and I'll be good. But we've got, you know, I don't know how many stylists, how clients you guys take every day, but sometimes it's, you know, four to six or yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's about right. And boom, boom, boom. And I'm probably gonna be spacing some people out between appointments which, you know, lowers my income for sure. But just on the side of safety for everybody. I don't know. We'll see. It's so we're, weird. We're, we're shampooing it. We're like right, right there. Over. Right there. That's the whole like the meme with the uncomfortable eye contact because you're like right here on somebody's face. There's no <laughs> way not to be like, hey girl, how you doing? <laughs> 
<laughs> There's no way not to do that. Um, so just just help help stylists stay safe, help yourself stay safe, learn your hair now. There's there's way too many great resources out there. Like Stephanie said, Reed Curl has a list of who's doing virtual consultations. I believe there's also a list of courses and things that, that you can take, you can access uh, based on possibly loca locality, uh, curl diameter, what you're looking for in your hair. So there's so much out there that you could be doing right now, especially if you have time. Like for those of us who are not like running around crazy having like meetings at home even when you have time to yourself just just take 10 15 minutes a day to look at people who are qualified sources and to understand start understanding what's going on on your head thank y'all for the congratulations i that's why i've been that's why y'all have seen me eat and drink during this because <laughs> i don't talk to you guys because coffee makes me sick but i'm i'm, I'm You're doing great. pushing through it for us yes thank you <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys have a minute more, but there's one thing that we didn't talk about, and that's for our essential workers who are working still, who don't have this time, mm -hmm. and especially like nurses and doctors. You know, I'm getting messages personally. Um, mm -hmm. What can I do? I, I have so little time, and all the nurses and doctors that I know, mm -hmm. people that are working high contact, are wanting to wash their hair after every shift. I totally get it totally get it so you're not necessarily trying to preserve your curls for two and three days you're just trying to get rid of whatever was at the hospital or or there or the grocery store maybe and get rid of it so i've heard a lot of like how do i how do i do i don't have time to diffuse i don't have time to dry i don't have time to do anything and my answer i want to hear what you guys have to say my answer is don't worry about trying to have perfect curls right now, take care of yourself, um, spend the time, a little bit of time with conditioner and water and get, you know, soften and hydrate your hair, wash your hair for sure. And then don't really worry about styling it. Like if you put a bunch of styling products on it, it's going to take longer to dry. Um, so just do the minimal that you can, you know, use a little bit less product maybe. And I know if you have tight curls and a lot of thick hair that using a little bit less product, is not going to really do much. So at least if you could speak to that, uh, this is one of those times where I'm going to encourage everybody who can to cover their hair. Yes. Um, we tie curls like we really cannot be shampooing every single day. Um, we can definitely do it about twice a week. But if you have the option where you work to cover your hair, please do. Um, especially if you're in a hospital, making sure that uh, whatever is coming, your hair is covered. And when you do shampoo, make sure you can use a, the most moisturizing shampoo that's going to actually cleanse. Um, Definitely go ahead and condition. This may be the time where you want to put that conditioner on and just have like some me time in the shower. I, I put conditioner on and contemplate the meaning of life in a hot, steamy shower. Um, and then this is also the time to not worry about your curl setting, not worry about wash and goes. This is this is where you you put a goddess braid in. You start doing some twists. Um, you put something in that does not have to be disturbed every morning that you can tuck and pin and then put under something. If again, if you're allowed to wear some headgear, um, so that your hair does not one, get exposed too much. And two, you're, it's not necessarily, you're not having to worry about, um, is it going to get frizzy? Do I have to dry it? Do I have to set it? Just put it in whatever is the easiest thing for you um, to be able to get up and go. Yes. I've even seen some nurses locally um, promoting putting their hair under bonnets, which I thought was a wonderful idea mm -hmm. because com that combined with the mask, they're protected. The hair is out of the way and protected as well. And that kind of goes along with like, you know, little kid hair care, you know, like just, just protect it because the kids are gonna be running around, um, not, not out playing with playgrounds, but it, it's the same, like that minimalistic curl care is the same thing. Um, I know for my girls, I just, I put them in braids all the time because I'm like, there's no need for your hair to look amazing. So I'm just going to take care no. of it. I'm going to take care of your hair so that you have good hair and then um, healthy hair rather, not necessarily good, healthy hair, and then put it in a braid to just like let you be a kid. Yeah, because my kid's hair looks just like my hair. We're, we we do not have cute hair in this house. No, no None of the three <laughs> of us have cute hair right now. <laughs> this is going to be what it is. Yep. Okay, so one question was, can you repeat where the resources are to find stylists? Um, I'll, I'll let you, Elise tell you hers again in just a second, but we have one on um, Curl Magazine's website, which is readcurl.com slash stylist directory. And that is um, stylists who have partnered with us at the magazine. Um, there are tons of good people on there, so you can find someone close to you. And Elise, can you tell them where they can find um, people who specialize in tight curls who have partnered with you? All right. So the, the people that are on that list are alumni of our Cut It Kinky um, education. So you can find that at Black 
pearlmagic.com. Cool. Thank you. And um, this is going to be saved. Uh, it'll be on Facebook and on YouTube if you want to watch the replay. And we will put the links um, in the comments as well so that you can just um, access them quickly. Uh, any other questions before we wrap up? I think I saw one at the top, which I want to ask because it was about red hair. And um, mm -hmm. I'm curious. <laughs> but the question was basically, is there any kind of uh, difference? Have you ever noticed a difference in red hair versus other types of hair and, and what it needs? Red hair is often a lot coarser. Hmm. Red, not saying always, but it can yeah. be. When I say that strand itself, it can be, it can feel silky, but that strand is very compacted. That cuticle layer is just lays so much. And so it repels everything. And that's for, that's for loose, sandy, Caucasian um, redheads. Uh, I have a sandy at home and that sandy hair it's like this close to red and it, it repels. And so that's where you're really gonna wanna up your moisture conditioner and uh, probably working gently with a tool um, mm -hmm. for tangling. So, cause I know everybody's like finger to tangle, finger to tangle, that's no. great. When you have a small child who can't stand to get their hair to tangle, you want it done as fast as possible in the most efficient way so that you're not having to come back and then fight the tangles. So you have that, you have the demon. I use a Felicia Leatherwood um, just because yeah. it's wider and it gives me more because for some reason my daughter's hair just, she, her hair hates the demon. I don't even know what it is. I try. Oh, no, no. For my for my thicker, coarser and my tighter curls, I for mm -hmm. sure use Felicia Leatherwood. There's no question. But for my yeah. hair, it's too much for me. It's, it's too, too much, much for me. Oh, it's too much it's, for you. It's too much for me. Yeah. No, no. Gotcha. I don't right. have enough hair. Like it goes straight to the scalp and it's just like, ah, I thought you just like, yeah, yeah, it's too much. So I need like a little bit of a softer bristle going on. Gotcha. All right. So that's, that's really the, oh, it's not so much about the color. It's about the composition of the strand and how that cuticle layer lays down. And, off, and oftentimes um, redheads, sandy heads, um, especially like the, the black women that you see that have like level four, five, six hair. It can usually is really tightly coiled, can be silky on the surface, and it's very low porosity. Yeah. That question I think was um it was are there Estelle, are there any particular tips for redhead curls for a seven year old in, in um parentheses? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kid, no, just just go <laughs> ahead. take care of it. Detangle <laughs> <laughs> it. Detangle it. Yep. Put it put it in braids if you need to to let the kid be a kid. A lot of people are trying to make their hair, their kids' hair look amazing, you know, like super top, top notch curls. And it's like, not just keep their hair healthy until that they can do that. I, the whole wash and go concept to me, I don't care what the curl diameter is, like they're kids, they're gonna yeah. come home and the curls are gonna be like this. Yes, it doesn't matter. It's just yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you to those of you who joined us and watched. Um, don't forget to pre-order issue number seven by tonight and you'll get free shipping in the U.S. and the global rates are super cheap. And also, if you're uh, if you're interested in subscribing, you can do that at readcurl.com. And uh, if you subscribe now, uh, you your subscription will begin with issue number seven, which is scheduled to come out on May 1st. Right now, we are not uh, delayed because of coronavirus with the release of the next magazine. So everything is on schedule. Um, and uh, thank you to Michelle, Gina, and Elise for joining us and sharing your knowledge. And um, again, this will be reposted on YouTube and Facebook. So make sure you give it a watch. Thanks for being here and uh, curl on guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <clears throat>